it's like you're in Cleveland and you got the map of Detroit. I like I like to use the word decompression instead of stretching. Um, I, I, when my athletes come in or anybody, general pop, the first thing I do is I tell them, let's go get on the ground, decompress. And the reason why I like to use that is, is because we don't like to target the muscle. We target the system, the right? Math. So yeah. So when when I go in there and somebody's like, "Well, my calf is tight," I'm like, "All right, well, go through your groundwork. Tell me how you feel after, and uh, get on the wall." You know, when we did the corner hinge where mm-hmm. you're on the wall, it opens up that back chain, right? Typically, what happens with um, anybody, and, and and you know, I use the word athlete a lot because it's more of the the lane that I'm in. But when I get a guy that comes in and he's got Achilles pain and stuff like that, you know, most times they go to therapy, they treating the Achilles and they doing this and that. I open up the hamstring, the calf, yeah, and all and of that. Coach, and it'll take coach the talk about off. how the stretching math is the same as your world class performance, man. right? Yeah. So everything's done inside of that. Like when I put you back down on the ground. Even though you may be in what you think is a stretch, it's it's a closed chain environment because we taking those eight six eight points and we're closing the chain with the knees, the foot, and stuff like that. So even though you're going into a stretch, it's still kind of loaded. You you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's not like you're laying on a table and somebody's bending the foot and trying to open the hamstring or the calf up or something like that. So if you keep going to the ground you're going to get deeper and deeper into that decompression phase. Then we train you inside of the decompression phase and you stay there. Right. Because neurologically, Mm -hmm. your body's only going to know that behavior. So we go back to the behavior, right? If the behavior is always back chain in the exercise and it's always back chain in the resting, then it's, and it's always back chain in the decompression, then guess who you're going to be? Yeah. You're going to be a back chain dominant person. If I could tell your followers anything. You have this one life to live, and you don't want to take any steps backwards. I heard uh, Justin Gatlin say that. I don't want to take no steps backwards. When you stretching and the transferability of the stretch goes immediately to the way you swing, strike, walk, run, throw, kick, then you're wasting no time. Mm. The challenge with some of these old systems, and the reason why we've been very angry and we'd letting all that go, is because you're going to yoga and you're doing warrior two, inside ankle bone low. You're going to Pilates and you're bracing the core for an hour doing flutter kicks. And it's got no transferability to anything involving real life Mm. or the indigenous life of the past, Mm -hmm. which is what we need to keep the joints anti-fragile for 105 years. What you got over there, Andrew? I know you're brewing up questions. Uh, I mean, all of this has been so eye-opening. I've told you guys so many times, but... I sincerely hope that like when people are listening to Mark right now talk about everything that they understand, they, they can feel the enthusiasm. I mean, both of us were shaking, trembling, you know, yeah, going crazy. Yeah, on the way home. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah uh, as soon as we left yesterday, like by the time I like turned that first corner, my phone was ringing. I was like, oh shit, Mark. And we're like yelling at each other how excited <laughs> we are. Yeah. Not even joking. When I, when I hung up the phone, like I had to like turn up like the, uh, the volume. Cause I'm like, why is this stereo so low? And I was like, oh, it's cause I was yelling at Mark. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But Andrew, just wait, just wait Dude, uh, until you stand <laughs> Dude, at the foot of the water for a sprint triathlon, oh. and you say, "I could do this. I just, I could do this, and I could get to the end and go straight to the beer tent and drink beer without knee pain." The, 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 you know what's bigger than that, and not to cut you off, and, and it's 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 like emotional for me, oh, absolutely, because I, my passion is so deep into this shit right now. To hear you speak like that. And know that we brought that to the table. Mm -hmm. To know that we gave you that gift. There's not a fucking dollar in the world. There's not a check that you could cut me. To know that I gave you that because you might have kids that you want to play with. You told me out there on the turf that I got a one-year-old that Mm -hmm. I hold and I coddle and I want to get on the fucking ground with them. And you have that freedom to do that now. Mm -hmm. Somewhere along the line, no matter what it is, no no point figures or nothing, that fucking birthright was taken from you. And you got it back now. That is fucking powerful. Yes, and that's what I was going to say, that that the start of that race for me is holding my son and then just literally getting down on the ground. And then crisscross applesauce, whatever it may be. You got your goals. One of the poses and that sort of thing. But you just said something I wanted to bring up. You said it's my birthright. That's right. When you you said it yesterday, I was just like, "Oh shit, it's my yeah. birth, it's my birthright to be able to put my palms on the floor in yes. front of me." I'm getting the chills right now 
thinking so, about that. Yeah. And I, I've lost that birthright, but I'm getting it back now. Think, think about this and think about where our drive and our passion comes from. A lot of people take what we do and they take it the wrong way. And guess what? We do get out of line sometimes and we do act a certain way. But when somebody's <laughs> sitting there and you immediately trying to argue and debunk what I'm saying on Instagram and you <laughs> fucking ain't never gotten a child rocker position, yes. don't come to the table <laughs> with me because I'm going to poke holes in every fucking <laughs> yeah. thing that you got to say because I want you to play with your child. See, all you did was you just poured some gasoline on my shit. Yeah. When I go back home, I'm fucking shit up. You better Let's believe go. that. Yes. It's on and popping now. Yeah. Yep. Them kids are going to listen to this show. My kids that go in my gym, they got fucking faith in me. They believe in me because I've been protecting their body for a long time. Mm. We got a guy that just popped an Achilles mm. that we gave him two years. Two years on a ruptured Achilles and it finally gave out, but he made $3 million in the league. Mm. He went from the fucking practice squad to, to starting and being the most efficient, efficient line, Ike Bodega with the Buffalo Bills. Two years, his family set for life. Mm. Nobody could ever give him that. Well, and then the other thing about the athlete, I can speak on that from being a former athlete, is that I just want to trust the coach. Like, mm. I want good, I want to know where I stand. I want good information. When Ike shows up, he knows where he stands. He now knows where the injury can happen. He now knows how to try to stop that as much as we can. I went through so many years where I'm like, dude, what do I do next? Mm -hmm. What's the next book I got to buy? What's the next YouTube video I got to mm -hmm. I gotta watch to try to figure out maybe some little piece of this where now we can give the education back to the athlete. We can be upfront with them. We can talk to the parents and say, look, your child's at risk over here. You're not in the clear. You got to fight to get this back. But now you know. Now you can now at least take power back, like Andrew's saying, I can have power over my back pain. I can have power over this compression, over this WOTA, that I know I'm gonna get inputs. We know I'm gonna fly yeah. back to Ohio tomorrow and I'm gonna get off that plane. I'm like, oh man, I gotta get back to the ground. <laughs> but now I know, where it used to just be, you'd fly, then you'd sit, then you'd sit some more, then you do mm. some, and then the next thing you know, you're in a completely weird space that you can't get out of because you don't have a blueprint. It's like you're in Cleveland and you got the map of Detroit. Yeah. The world's in this, they're in Cleveland, but they got the map of Detroit. And we're like, guys, we got the wrong map. We've got to use this map. What's that map you got over there? Well, we just got it from the most durable humans on the planet. People that didn't fall apart, they move like this. People that fall apart, they move like that. It's literally that simple. And all we did with you guys is we moved you closer to what moving well mm -hmm. looks like, moving yeah. durable looks like. And you guys were like, whoa, what's this? Mm -hmm. But it explained why in the assessments, all those movement errors were all hot spots for injuries. Mm -hmm. Everything that we call out, hey, you got inside ankle bone low here. How's that left hip? Yeah, it fucking sucks. Your head's not getting <laughs> in your right column. What's going on with that right knee? Yeah, it hurts. So now as an athlete, when I had my first assessment with these guys, I'm like, the 10 years of trying to figure out what's wrong with my back, what's wrong with my left hip, why I can't drive the ball down the field, it just got answered in 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what is going on here? We got to give it back. And, you got to give Mark, it back to the next generation. Y'all need, need us. Well, and the endurance athletes too, because um, the ultra guys and the marathon mm. people, if they run in inside ankle bone low, if there's an error in the movement, they tear they, they tear meniscus, they tear cartilage in the hip. But you guys need us the most because y'all playing outside the blueprint to enjoy this thing called powerlifting and mm -hmm. all. So y'all have to be go to, and so you can go do your lifts because this is what you love to do, right. yeah. you know? Some people are gonna put on in bat suits and they're gonna jump off, off the cliffs. It's just it, it is what it is. So you gotta be go to more than me. Anybody, yeah. Cause you're gonna lift, I'm just going to play golf. Pat Project family, how's it going? Now, on this podcast and almost every single episode, we talk about sleep because sleep is important for your workouts, for your recovery, for your nutrition, for your fat loss, for your muscle gain. Literally everything comes down to getting great sleep at night. That's why you've partnered with Eight Sleep Mattresses. Now they have something called the Pod Pro Cover. Now this cover is something you can put over one of Eight Sleep's mattresses or your existing mattress. And it temperature regulates through the night so that you get the best sleep possible at every phase of your sleep. You know, most people uh, think that you need to have your room temperature at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, but our temperature is different. I sleep hotter than most people. Uh, you might sleep cooler. So that's why the eight sleep mattress for yourself and your partner, either side of the mattress can have its own temperature regulation. And the cool thing is that the eight sleep app watches your temperature through multiple nights and it'll literally change the way the temperature is set based off of the way you sleep. 
it's crazy. It's literally the Tesla of beds. Andrew, tell them about it, dude. Yeah, dude, it, it's, this uh, technology is insane. It's like the most high technological, can't even say that word, uh, piece of equipment that I have in my whole house. Um, so you guys got to head over to 8sleep.com slash power project. That's eight spelled out. So E-I-G-H-T sleep.com slash power project. And you guys will receive $150 off of your pod pro cover or your pod pro cover and mattress combo. And I must say that that mattress is actually extremely comfortable. They didn't skimp out on anything on this uh, product. Again, eight sleep.com slash power project links to them down in the description, as well as the podcast show notes. Lifters, yeah. crossfitters, <laughs> those guys, they, they need this bad. And, you know, I, the, the CrossFit people that come in to me are, like I said, I got Jody Kennedy, the strong woman that I worked with before. Those those people that come in and they get to meet us and do the work and they're like, oh, okay, yeah. I, I get it. Like you, you know what I'm saying? And, and listen, we regular guys, but like I said, man, <laughs> Don't get me fired up. <laughs> I'll fucking take this sword. No, do get him ass. fired up. I need Gary <laughs> swinging a samurai sword by the end of this thing. I was telling Andrew yesterday, uh, we were talking about, you know, him, you know, working on getting out of back pain and trusting in this system. Hey, Andrew, and, it's over. It's checkmate. And You hang out uh, with us for six months, you'll never have back pain again in your life. And I'm I so told grateful. him that his new coach is his son. I said, well, mm -hmm. I said, watch what yep. your son does. He'll yep. teach you how to, yep. everything you need there to know. You Lay down on the ground with him. Yep. If he's walking or crawling or he moves this way or that way, just move with him. Yeah, yep. it was funny. So like before, uh, this was, I think, just late last week, I was watching my son because he's, he's a little fucker's taking off now. Like, he's fast. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. take your eye off of him. So uh, I was watching him and as he's moving, I'm like, it looks like he's swimming because, yes. because that, that back leg right, that's is why doing they call this. It a crawl, that's why they call it a crawl stroke, and freestyle. Now yeah. after hanging out with you guys, I'm like, Oh, like that's it, how you're supposed to be walking. He's been this trying to send time. you messages yeah. the entire time. He's just like, Dad, this is why your back sucks. Swimming, bro. just crawling in the water. Yeah, it's that <laughs> yeah. same pattern. You know, it's it's everything that, hey, that we're what, talking what, about. What you told that dude the other day? We <laughs> did a we did a, 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 a video thing the other day, and the guy's like, Hey, I think my two year old's inside ankle bone low. And Ricky pops up off the chair. Yeah. And he's like, Let the little fucker's hand go when you're walking with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. First off, stop taking him outside yeah. the pattern because everybody does that. They they hold a hand, and the kids like, that. Yeah, you like this to the kid you're messing with, are you trying to stand your kid up i mean these are oh, things that are funny. so innocent as yeah. parents that you love and you don't even know you're you're doing these things like mm. you want to you want your kid to look cute for the picture so you put a, a, a you know a cool shoe on them and you don't think about their brain does not want that shoe like gary said kids are taking the shoes off and they're throwing them kids are sitting in chairs in the same floor resting postures mm. even though you sit them down their but we had a video we just sent out a, a little while ago where someone was trying to set their baby down on its feet to stand uh, and it kept going into Seiza. Yeah. It kept going uh, into Seiza. Yeah. Kept going into Seiza. It didn't want to. We are doing things unknowingly out of love, but are actually pulling our children closer to woe to stuff like grabbing a hand when they're walking, you're going to mess them up. Grabbing two hands and trying to get them off the ground too soon, you're going to mess them up. Putting them in a bouncy chair or a bouncy seat, you're going to mess them up. Much like what was good for you guys was mm -hmm. back on the ground, that's good for your children. Keep yeah. your children on the ground, keep them barefoot, let them crawl for as long as they can. How long did Swaggy P crawl for? Yeah. 20 months. 20 well, months. So you, you just burn the pattern deep yeah. into the system. If you could let your child grow up Goda and keep them Goda through adolescence, just like it's really hard to recode a Woda because they're so far gone, it's really hard to decode a Goda yeah. because it's so locked in. That's like a Michael Jordan where he doesn't touch a weight until age 30 or so where he's in his late 20s and he's trying to get past the Pistons. And then even then, like we talked about yesterday, it's mostly just hypertrophy, trying to get the mm -hmm. upper body to get a little more more swole, but he locked in the go to pattern. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be more durable. He's going to be able to play at a bigger body size. Everybody said when Jordan came in, I oh, ain't big enough. I think he was big enough. Mm -hmm. Why was that? What was his advantage? Why does his movement look different than everybody else? Why does Ed Reed look a certain way? Why does Randy Moss look a certain mm -hmm. way? And everybody just keeps saying it's outliers. We've got the video proof to say it's not outliers because mm -hmm. my son Mickey crawled in the same pattern that Randy Moss runs in. And he's moving in the same pattern that Ed Reed. Now you got to take that pattern and layer skill into it and layer the sport into it. And then you can go ahead and you can become a great athlete. But you take the pattern from them, you're going to rob them. And, and, I'll, and I'll say this because um, we still can't get the answer to why unexplained joint repairs and replacement is growing at 15%. Mm. Nobody will tell me anything that makes any sense that everybody who gets a joint replacement is a woda. And I've been to the, we have an orthopedic that works out with us 
every morning. And I said, do this. Because before my dad died, I had to take him to the uh, to orthopedic. And, I, and I'd sit by the door with my camera. And everybody that came in with a cane, whoa. And then it would be like two hours before my dad got out. No goaders walked in, mm. ever. Ever. Because they don't show. And then when you see a goater at 90 and you say, hey, uh, you ever had any pain? They're like, what? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, you yeah. ever you ever wonder why you know the 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 great the great ones don't really get hurt that often? Mm-hmm. You know, you remember uh, like Barry Sanders. Like it was mm-hmm. like rare for Barry <laughs> Sanders to be. I think he had like I think he missed like one game because he had a like, busted rib. I mean, yeah, so there's a lot. Ricky yeah. Anderson, yeah, yeah. Babe Ruth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of guys, right? Go- Looking at Kittle right here. Yeah, yeah Kittle. I- Kittle. Um, he came in. Me and Rick had the opportunity to go up there to the ranch and work with him and a few of the um the tight ends that they had at tight end U. And uh, they they building this this whole like ranch type style thing with a barn as a training facility and got a couple of little things that were insane athlete. It's, he is. He, is. Oh, it, now he had the um at week one he got stepped on on a calf mm. and uh it went down in week three as a, a calf injury or something right. like that. But he it was just somebody stepped on him when he was coming up trying to get up from the ground and they couldn't get the swelling out so he went on the IR. But if you look at him now, this is a recent more of a recent photo, you could see him living in the shape. Like mm. we see him straight feet, inside ankle bone high. Mm. He's doing two go to workouts a day. He's starting to get the pattern back. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? You're starting to see it again. So he's he's seems to be all in. Uh, you yep. know, as far as we know, his dad and his sister are all in on the on the whole thing. And um it's, it, the, it's dude, for the pro athlete it's really the the, the toughest Recode because <clears throat> you have to compete mm. while you're trying to change patterns. Like we told you guys, man, if you could shut it down for three weeks or even three months, that'd be great. Like when Ike showed up, we don't have time for that. So mm, we're yeah. trying to to fix WOTA as they're still getting WOTA inputs. And that's why it's so important and crucial for the pro athletes out there. Like you need that groundwork routine to keep you injury you know, free during the season as best as you possibly can to try to start to move that needle closer to GOTA. And it's not, it doesn't have to be something that feels like it's a ton of time out of your day. Like we talked about, if you just get back to the ground for five to 10 minutes in the morning, it's powerful. <laughs> Hey, little mama, let me whisper in your ear, like, comment, subscribe to the channel because we continue to bring you peak content on this channel. Obviously, you guys are here. You guys have watched the whole video. So like, comment, subscribe. All right. See you later.